Uh, today we will be starting with the third chapter of class 11th that is your private, public and global enterprises. Right. In the second chapter we learned about what uh, private sector was all about and what are the different forms in which a private sector can be organized. Right. Now let us try and first understand what is the basic difference between private sector and public sector. Right. Now let us first quickly recapitulate what was private sector all about. The first and the foremost motive of a private sector enterprise is profit maximization. Right. They come into existence with the basic motive of maximizing profits. Right. Secondly, they are owned, controlled and managed by rich private entrepreneurs. I repeat they are owned, controlled and managed by rich and private entrepreneurs, right. Government has got nothing, no interference at all in the private sector enterprises, right. Then they are not accountable to public about their working, fine. They are under no pressure to publish their annual reports. They do not have to, they are not accountable to the public at all, right. We are talking about the private sector enterprises who have invested their own money in the business, they are under no pressure to give justification for their acts to the public at large, right. And finally, they can be organized as sole proprietorship, partnership, joint Hindu family business, cooperative societies and joint stock company, fine. I have not explained all this in uh, much of a detail because I have already covered this quite in detail in your chapter 2. Now coming to public sector. When we say public, the first word that comes to anyone's mind is government, right. So, public sector enterprises, the main motive of any enterprise working in a public sector is public service. Public enterprise comes into existence to serve public at large, right. Public service means that you are going to serve the society at large by providing them goods and services at the minimum possible prices and of the best quality possible, right. After that comes that they work at a very meager profit margin. They definitely do not sell you the products at cost. Jitna unka cost lag raha hai, usi pe aapko nahi bechenge, but then definitely unke profit margin jo hote hai, they are pretty less as compared to the private sector enterprises, fine. Aisa kyun? Because private sector enterprises mein the main motive is to maximize profits and here in public sector enterprises the main motive is to satisfy the uh, public and to serve the public, right. After that comes state ownership and state management and control. Iska matlab, these organization, they are owned, controlled and managed by the state or the central government, right. Owned matlab, sara ka sara jo paisa lagaya jata in enterprises mein, it comes from the government, right. Controlled meaning all the decisions, all the important decisions pertaining to the business, they need to have an approval of the government, right. And they are managed by the government, they are managed by the board of directors which are definitely going to be appointed by the government itself. So, these public sector enterprises, they are owned, controlled and managed by the government public accountability, right. They are accountable to, they are accountable for each and every single penny that they have spent. They have to give an account for the same to the government, right. Because it is the government's money which is being invested in the business, fine. And the government is investing this money in the business for the good of the public, right. So, all people who are, uh, who, who, who are involved in this business, they owe an explanation to the government for every single penny which has been spent, right. Then last is, can be organized as departmental undertaking, statutory corporation and a government company. Private sector mein ye humne paanch forms ki thi last chapter mein, right. In this chapter we are going to cover these three forms that is your departmental undertaking, statutory corporation and a government company. So, this was a more or less I will say a comparative review of what private sector is all about and what public sector is all about, right. Now coming to what is the rationale of public sector undertakings. You know what rationale means, rational meanings, what is the justification, why do these public sector undertakings exist at all, kyun honi chahiye, 
find what are the reasons for existence of the public sector undertakings. Number one is infrastructure. Now, first of all, what is the meaning of the word infrastructure? For smooth functioning of any business, hum koi bhi business le le, theek hai? If the place of production is not well connected with the place of consumption, is the business going to be successful? Answer is no. If there are no means of communication, fine. If there are no channels of communication which are available as to us today, they are not there. Will the business be successful? No. So, basically all these support services, you know, which facilitate smooth functioning of business, this is nothing else but infrastructure. Aapka roadways, railways, communication system, ye sara kya constitute karta hai, ye mera infrastructure hai, which is essential for smooth functioning of the business. Right? Now, roads banana, railway lines dalna, thik hai, postal and telegraph services. Now, all these constitute your infrastructure. Thik hai? Private sector and, and infrastructure build up karne ke liye, you need to invest quite an amount of money. Fine? And these are the projects which have a long gestation period. Long gestation period meaning, inko complete hone mein kafi time lagta hai aur ye profit yield karne mein, they take, they take quite a long period of time to start yielding profits. So, for a private sector, it is a big no-no. Thik hai? Because what their aim is to maximize? Profit. But unka paisa kafi sara at stake lag jayega aur profit aane mein kafi time lagta hai. Right. So, private sector would not want to enter into this area. Right. So, re kya gaya? Public sector. So, it is a responsibility of the public sector to develop infrastructure. Secondly, we are coming to basic and heavy industries. When we talk about basic and heavy industries like your uh, steel authority of India limited or gas authority of India limited. Thik hai? These again, they require huge amount of money to be invested and again have a longer gestation period. Right? So, it becomes imperative for the public sector to step in this area as well. Right? Private sector does not bother itself with this. Thereafter, defense requirement. Now, when we talk about our national frontiers, pay, fine, we have our defense personnel posted over there. We talk, be it your Air Force, be it Navy or be it Army. Fine. And they require their, uh, they require their arms and ammunition from time to time. Unko bhi to supplies chahiye hai na, agar wahan pe war footing pe hai, wahan pe. They also need their supplies. Now, in order to manufacture this also, lot of money goes in this. Right. Lot of money goes in this. And it is, they work at a very, very meager profit margin. Clear? So, this again is, becomes the area of public sector undertaking. Hai? After that comes your public utility <coughs> services. When we talk about the public utility services, we are here talking about water, electricity, gas and transportation. Fine. Aapko, at the end of all these points, when we cover, you know, you will find out all the points that we have written, most of them, they involve projects which are longer with a longer gestation period and a huge amount of capital investment, which is the forte of public sector. Right. Now, when we talk about public utility services, public utility services may aapka aa jayega, rail, road, uh, railways, roadways, basically transport and communication. Fine. As explained earlier also, these are the projects in longer gestation period and require huge in capital il, uh, investment. All right. So, therefore, again private sector is not really interested in that. So, public sector takes up the responsibility. Now, coming to the next point that is your balanced regional development. Any private sector enterprise would be interested to start its manufacturing unit in an area where there is well developed infrastructure. Thik hai? Jo bhi backward area hoga private sector enterprise aapko wahan pe kam hi milegi. Clear? Ab agar sabhi enterprises aise hi sochne lagi to kya hoga ki ek country mein sirf metro cities jo hain, thik hai, wohi flourish karengi aur wohi develop karengi. Baki ki jo states hain, wo to niche ki niche reh jayengi. As a result of which, kya hoga? Regional disparities a jayengi. Regional disparities a jayengi. So, in order to make sure that each and every region is moving towards development at the same pace, fine, the government has to focus on balanced regional development. 
ऐसे में वो क्या करते हैं दे मेक श्योर दैट दीज पब्लिक सेक्टर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दे आर लोकेटेड इन बैकवर्ड एरियाज ठीक है एक वहां पे हमने अगर सेटअप की तो ऑटोमेटिकली इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वहां पे डेवलप होना शुरू होगा एंड देर बाई लीडिंग टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दैट एरिया राइट देर आफ्टर एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन नाउ अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट वॉज द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज दैट आवर कंट्री फेस्ड एट वन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम क्लियर सो बाई सेटिंग अप मोर नंबर ऑफ पी एस यूज दे वर ऑल्सो द गवर्नमेंट वॉज ऑल्सो ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट a large number of jobs for the unemployed thereby providing a solution to the major problem that our country was facing right last is control of monopolistic tendencies now what is the meaning of monopolistic tendency it means wherein concentration of economic power in fewer hands fine if i am the only seller of a particular commodity i can charge whatever price i wish to for that particular commodity right and the consumer will not have any choice but to buy that commodity at that price at which i am selling because he doesn't have a choice fine this is a situation of monopoly whereby you are able to make profits by charging whatever price you wish to from the consumers now government stepped in at this point of time by setting in public sector units in such areas okay by providing goods to the public at large at reasonable prices so that there is no monopoly in the market clear i hope i have make, made myself clear as to why what is the need of having public sector undertakings or what is the importance of having public sector undertaking i can call it as rational i can call it as justification i can call it as why public sector undertakings are required or, or the importance of public sector undertakings right after the uh, after this we are going to cover the different uh, forms of organizations in a public sector uh, in public sector that is your departmental undertaking statutory corporation and government company